Hey there, Walter here. We're going to talk about Profit Brick. So this is something we've been talking about for a while uh, in some of these videos, but we haven't mentioned it in a while. And I had a question come through from a trader. So I'll explain to you how this works. So Thad sent me an email and he said, Hey, Walter, hope this finds you well. Happy Monday. My name is Thad. I'm the seasoned trader, uh, S&D naked trader. I was a, um, a big fan of your book when it came out a few years ago. Really love what you're doing with the trade level compounding. I think it's incredibly unorthodox and creative for risk management strategy, which I find enticing. It says, you know, I've been working on this risk management stuff for a while, and this is the best thing I've come across. I actually uh, wrote a book called uh, Risk for F Risk Management for Forex Trading or su Successful something forex management for i don't know i can't remember the name of the book i'll put it in here but um it's b basically a book that i give three books that i've written since naked forks for the members of our coaching program but the important thing is in the book i kind of lay out a lot of the stuff that i like and and some of the stuff that i don't like and one of the things i the, in the book that i really like is this one and so here's the biggest question from that my biggest question i have for you is since consecutive wins are the backbone of the success of the risk management strategy how does trade level compounding affect your willingness to want to pull out, uh, out of the double down trades that may pull back on you and cause a loss do you use aggressive trailing stops to protect your profits early on i understand your seasoned trader with decades of experience that's not true got 19 years in currency so not quite two so not not decades yet <laughs> um, as of the recording of this but the biggest drawback to this risk management uh, strategy that I can infer would be its impact on the psychology of the trader uh, pulling out too early and not letting the wind simply run their course you know what I mean we'd love to get your thoughts on this yes this is really good um, Thad we've talked about uh, this element of trading, like not willing to take, you know, follow your rules. I've talked about this in the two traders podcast. You can find that wherever you find podcasts like SoundCloud or Apple podcasts or whatever Two traders. We talk about that. Darren and I talk about this. What, here's what I would say. Uh, what you're talking about is, is the, the problem of execution. So a lot of times in trading, we find it difficult to take another trade because we let the other stuff get in the way. So um, let's say this is the yen right here, four-hour chart. Let's say you saw the, the market hit this resistance level at 110.21, comes back up, hits it again, gives you a kangaroo tail, so you sell. Okay, you sell on this third candle, so you actually don't get in within two candles, which is not really my, my ideal setup. I like to get in within two candles. But let's just say that you got in on this candle here and you saw it fall and it went in your favor. Uh, that's great. Maybe you take this other trendy kangaroo tail. I don't think this one's good enough. I think the close is too high, but some traders would like that one. Maybe you go play this gap here. I think it's probably not enough. This is the four-hour chart. Let's see how big that gap is. Yeah, it's only 13 pips. That wouldn't be enough for me, but some traders like to play the gaps as well. Maybe you go in with this bend trade right here, right, on this, on this bend right here. Uh, that probably would end up getting stopped out. So maybe you start to doubt yourself. And then finally... What you have here is another trendy kangaroo tail, like a bearish one, and that one gets stopped out. So the question is, what do you do when you see this bullish big shadow with the trend? Uh, some traders wouldn't take it, given that they had a bend trade where they lost and a, a trendy kangaroo tail here where they lost. Um, but if you took it, the good news is you would have seen it go up, not quite to this level yet. We're still right here. We're about at entry price, really, close to the entry on that. It pulls back, gives you another trendy kangaroo tail here. You'd still be in that one too, but you'd be hanging around waiting. And sometimes people don't like to wait. This is what I've learned in my testing and in my trading, Thad, is that uh, if, I, if I let my trades go and just either hit the stop loss or the target, um, I do better in terms of overall P&L versus um, managing my trades. Now, when I first started trading, I moved to break even really quickly. And that's a really good way to protect your account. It's, there's no doubt about it. However, it's not going to grow your account as quickly, if that makes any sense. So when we're trading trade level compounding trades, and by the way, if you want information on this, I forgot, you can get in the, go to bigprofitscourse.com, bigprofitscourse, and, um, and you get more information about um, trade level compounding and the small accounts, big profits course, and all that stuff. You can go to bigprofitscourse.com. So what we're, what I'm trying to do here is, is like, I'm like, with risk management, how, wh what's going to make the most amount of money for me? R really? That's the, the idea here. 
uh, assuming I can deal with the psychology of it. One trick that I've used with these profit bricks trades is I've learned to count it as a half a trade. So when you have a win, you actually don't count it as the trade. The trade is only half over until you do the, the second bit, right? We take those winnings and add to the second trade. So let me show you what would look what, what it looks like when you have a trailing exit with profit bricks. This is a, just a trend following strategy. Uh, and, and what you can see here are two curves. Now, there's a couple of interesting things about this. First, the red curve doesn't accelerate as fast, right? How many trades was this? Here, we'll have a look here. Uh, this is from four down to, I think it's like 90 or 80 trades. Four down to, no, less than that, uh, 54. So 50 trades. So we had 50 trades here, and over 50 trades, um, the, the risk reward ratio is 2.28. We're risking 2% per trade. The average winner is $3,157 on a $50,000 account. The average loser is $1,383.41. And we start at 50 grand and we had a 43% win rate. So what's happening here, what's interesting about this is that you actually have um, in, in this red curve, that's just normal fixed fractional. So red is fixed fractional. That which is two percent per trade. That's the normal sort of every book you're going to read about trading uh, suggests that. So we're not talking about optimal F or anything like that. We're talking about the normal two percent per trade. So that gets you after fifty trades, that gets you up to ninety grand, ninety four thousand in in this case, right? Using a trailing exit. So the the reason why the risk reward ratio is two point two eight is not because you know we went for 2.28 on every trade. It's because we allowed the winners to give us as much as possible with our, with our um, trailing exit. Then what happens when we use profit bricks, which is just taking the winnings from the previous trade and adding it to the next trade? We can see here a couple of things. Number one is when things aren't going well and you don't have a sequence of winners, um, you're in a deeper drawdown. Like you're, you're It's a parallel world in this blue line, we're down to 45,000. So we're down like almost five grand, whereas the uh, the regular 2% fixed fractional account is up half a percent. So that's what you have to deal with. Again, we're down 4,400 bucks, uh, which if my math is right, that's like almost 9% drawdown. And then um, with the fixed fractional, you're actually up 2.2%, right? So that's the, that's the trade-off. However, um, what what will happen when you trade this way is you get these big hops like from here from 69,662 bucks and then boom you're at 92 okay so we've covered the ground that it like in the normal fixed fractional we had to take all these trades which is probably like 25 trades something like that to get to here we've pretty much made like 90% of that move in a sequence of two trades. And the same thing happens here. So this is what's happening when you have your, your wins back to back. Now, obviously, one of the things that you'll notice is that a higher win rate strategy tends to have more sequ higher sequence of winners. That's basic probabilities. You might remember that from your stats course, right? However, uh, one thing you have to keep in mind, and again, we talk about this in the Profit Bricks course, which you'll get if you do sign up for Small Account Big Profits. You'll also get the Profit Bricks course with spreadsheets and all that stuff on how to you know, sort of look at this. Um, you typically have a lower reward risk ratio when you have a higher win rate. So that means that you don't get these big gains with the sequence of winners, right? The reason why these are big hops is because we had trades where we made a little bit of money from 88,000, it, it, it added 8,000, you know, to 96,000 or, or roughly something like that, 8,000, uh, wait, is that right? 8,300, something like that on the trade, right? Uh, which is about, you know, 9% on the trade, which is really good for one trade. But then because of that, the next trade also ends up being an awesome winner and and it, and it goes boom like that and you, and you add 20 29% to the account or a little bit more than that on the second trade. So the overall profit brick which is a two trade event, you hop from 88,000 to 129. Now, the only reason that happened there is because we followed up a winner with a winner. Now, I want to ask you another question. This is something to really think about, right? In in your own testing, have a look at this fad and others who are thinking about using this. Um, my question for you is if you have a system where you were trading the trend, okay, a trend following system like the one that I just showed you, if you have a system like that, 
are you more likely to have a sequence of winners um, in a row than if you had a different system, like say a breakout strategy or a swing strategy? That, that's the question. And that's actually a mathematical question. You can test that, right? There's a, th that, there is a way to test that. So uh, I'm not gonna get into all the stats and all that. And luckily, I, I fell into, uh, like when I went to uh, do my psychology PhD, I actually did a, um, a minor, a graduate minor in stats too. So I, I learned a lot. That was mostly because we were looking at juries and guilty, not guilty, and stuff like that. But actually, all that stuff kind of translates to trading. So you can look at that as a mathematical question. Say the question is, if I'm trading a trend following strategy, um, is you know, am I more likely to have a sequence of winners? And this is exactly what like Bill Williams, you know, that alligator strategy. That's actually the default um, thing here. I'll show you. So with the Bill Williams uh, system, uh, w one of the interesting things, so this is the Euro four hour chart, and you got the Gator, the awesome oscillator, and the uh, accelerator, whatever that, that thing was called. I, I can't remember. But I, I tested this strategy back in 2003, and um, I couldn't figure out, this is a big hint, by the way, in terms of profit bricks. I couldn't figure out why, um, you know, Bill Williams seemed like he was a straight shooter. I read his Trading Chaos book. Uh, back in 2003, it might have been 2004. I'm pretty sure it was the latter half of 2003. Anyway, I read his book and I was like, yeah, this makes sense. You can see these these are shifted, moving averages are shifted forward, obviously. He's got fractals going on here. I thought a lot of what he said made sense in his book, but when I tried to test it in Forex, because I think he used it on the S&P 500 on indices, I think that's what his students used. I think his sister, or his sister, his daughter is, uh, teaching people now, but I couldn't make it work. And I was like, what's going on? Reason why was I wasn't adding more, um, I wasn't adding more trades. So I made the mistake of trying to use just the signals and I didn't use the entire system. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get uh, across here. When you do your testing with profit bricks, make sure that you, um, that you take advantage of the math here. The reason why the math works on this trailing exit is that occasionally you will luck into a trade where this, the second the second half of your profit book trade is a big winner. Notice this is another one here, but the sec they're not nearly as big. Here's a little tiny winner from 122 to 129, <laughs> a little tiny winner, so $7,100, $7, something like that. And then the next one, it does hop up, but it's not really, you know what I mean? It's not as big a deal as over here. Um, and same thing over here, you know? So you, you get a win, but, but you know, it's not, it's not as, as, as nice. So it just, it's just important for you to remember when you are trading profit bricks that psychologically the trade isn't over after you've collected a win. Psychologically, the trade is over after you compounded that at the trade level, number one. And number two is, um, Give your, and we talk about this in the Two Traders podcast, give yourself a reward, a pat on the back for following your strategy, not for what happens. So when you lose or win, that's, that's great, but you shouldn't, that shouldn't be the reason why you change things up with your trading. It should be on whether or not you're following your rules, your entry rules and your exit rules. If you can focus on execution and pay attention to that and look at profit bricks trades as part A, part B, instead of saying, well, I've already booked this win, um, then that's that's half the battle right there. Because I agree that a lot of what we talk about in you know in this is really kind of the psychological. There's a math side of it, and you can see from the math it works. But then the psychological side is that well, can, can I really stick with this? And we talk about this in the Profit Bricks course, in the Small Account Big Profits course. We have an entire uh, module, a whole week devoted to the psychology of sticking with this, right? Because that's a big, big deal. So I hope that, that makes sense. I wish you very happy trading, and we'll see you in another video. Okay, bye.